Welcome to, This Bitch, with Sarah Weinshank and Kim Congdon. Everybody, welcome to another episode of This Bitch Podcast. I'm Kim Congdon. And I'm Sarah Weinshank. And we don't know what to do with ourselves. We are in a studio live. The single dads, they found a home. I mean, listen, we've been living life rogue as fuck. Yeah. We've, we've been sweating for no I would like every episode, I, my hair is all over the place. I'm sweating. Every episode, Sarah shows up and she's got beads across her lip. Right, she's dragging I'm up carrying all the tripods. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a fucking huge bag with I all got her a shit. sweat stash. I'm like, hey. We were the foster children of comedy. And now we've, we've found been a adopted. Home. We've been adopted by Mastermind Media. We're so excited to be here. Look at this fucking footage. I know. It's great. We're excited to be here. Go give them a follow. Support the people who are supporting the show. (laughs) Honey. Get in it, honey. Get in it. Bathe in it. Bathe in it. This is great. Bathe in the honey, honey. I'm excited. Um... I think we should tell them what we decided about the. I knew you were excited about it. Look at you. She can't even. Let me tell you this. Wait, okay, hold on. Let me tell you, okay, let me tell you what Kim does. She has a fucking fire idea. idea. She tells me right before the podcast, and then when I bring it up a minute later, she acts like I'm doing something wrong. Hey, ever heard of foreplay, bitch? Can we warm up to it? Uh, what okay. do you just go? What well, are you going to tease them with our nickname what, what for do you them? Meet, meet a guy at the bar and you fucking hop on his dick at the bar? Yeah. You gotta, <laughs> no. If it's a good dick, I'll shine it. <laughs> You'll shine it. What does that I mean? Don't know. Like a shoe I'll polish like, it. <laughs> like your pussy's a yeah. <laughs> you, a silver sh- cleaner. If it's a good dick, I'll shine it. Yeah. I've never heard something like that. Yeah, well, catch her at the airport shining your dick. <laughs> she has her own little kiosk. You want a dick shine? <laughs> <laughs> now you handing out for a nickel. <laughs> Not the nickel, please. It's anything with the nickel. A nickel for me to touch. A nickel your for a dick shine. And a nickel for a dick shine. I like that. Times are tough, honey. A nickel's worth one cent now. <laughs> <laughs> a nickel's worth ten whole cents now. So yeah, I'll shine a dick for one. <gasps> it was like times uh, are tough. Can we talk about your keyboard? No, this was a while ago. About, can we talk about the nickname? <laughs> okay. okay. Stop being weird. <laughs> I'm not Tell them about the nickname. I don't remember what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I don't. The babies, honey. Oh. <laughs> don't, make me, don't make me explain the premise on the podcast. Oh, that's what she's excited about. It's a good thing. Do, do we want to start? Okay. I said Let's, to Sarah. Yeah. I can't believe you're making me announce this in such a weird way. We have to announce it like we're getting... Well, you made it weird. I wanted to say it, and then you got mad at me for saying it too soon. I thought you were talking about the whole thing that we talked about doing for the episode. No. I thought you were jumping in. You know how you jump in. I do jump in, but you know what? I think you owe me an apology because this week I wasn't (laughs) jumping in. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you see this? This is a kinder side of Kim. There's growth here, people. I'm letting you know. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, I'm just going to get that... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And she's just gonna masturbate it to it every night. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing she jerks off to is me saying I'm sorry to her. <laughs> Look, I know I can tell by your Put laugh. The tear down her eye. <laughs> Do it again, but be more sad this time. <laughs> you want me to cr- keep crying? You have an apology king. <laughs> That's crazy. That's fucking insane. Okay. Okay, I'll tell them. Can you stop? You're being so scary about it. Well, well, you know, I can be a bitch too. People think. You're the bitch. Guess what? Do it's they? not true. <laughs> I can be. <laughs> Did they say that? Yeah. They say it. They said, be nicer to Sarah. And I agree. Who's that? People in the comments <laughs> on YouTube, they also say I have a stroke voice. And I'm I'm here to uh, t- see that, attack that head I on. I see that though. <laughs> I, yeah. I, you, you can stroke out a little. Yeah. My voice is my voice, honey. All right. So let's tell them what we're going to call them. All right. Can okay, you so, say it? You made it too okay. much. Now it's babies, does- right? You don't make it. It was your idea. You were all excited about it. Don't make the don't make the line not work. Now, can I tell you how I pitched it? it was You're most- supposed to say yes and. 
Okay. Let me. <laughs> okay, go. Go. I was saying, since we call them our honeys, we should call them our babies, but B E E S, like bumblebees. Like babies. And and that's all I said. I didn't say let's make an announcement. And Sarah's like, we have something to tell everybody. <laughs> they, th- they think we got picked up by Spotify. Like they think that this is it. This is the moment we've babies. all been waiting for. And all it is is that we have a dumb nickname for you. It's not a dumb nickname. Live from the hive. It's the honeys. Sound off on the comments. Let us know if you like the the name babies. If you want to be a babies or if you just want to stay a honey. I think they just want to stay a honey. They like being honeys. Oh, you're there, the one. But th- for this is the There thing. are sticky ickies. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better. I kind of like better. Our See, we're re- reworking it live. We're reworking it live. What up, our sticky ickies? <laughs> That's our creative process. <laughs> Not the sticky ickies. The sticky ickies live from the hive. Are you guys feeling sticky? <gasps> That's it. Sticky. I, I don't know if I want them to be feeling sticky. <laughs> they do. It seems a little gross. Because they're in our honey. That's like the premise. That's like the... Our honey. You guys let us know. Smash that You're like. You're drowning in our honey. Like that smash. Smash that like. <laughs> do what you got to do. Sound off in the comments if you want to be a sticky honey bee. So Tim, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> no. I have a question. I've what? been podcasting across from you for years now. How many years? 11? 10? 10. Dude, I don't know. Ten All years. I know. We've, a decade I've been podcasting and fighting with this bitch daily. Nonstop. How many missed calls do I have from you? 13. Just today. Just today. Mm-hmm. But who are you really? What does that mean? Did you catch me doing something wrong? No, because- You just want to know me. I just want to know you. That's so intimate. I know. New studio, new Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> the devil works hard, but Shanks works harder. Where's <laughs> a lighter? She turned into Crush Jenner I'm gonna suddenly. Need a, I'm going to need a blunt for oh, this. Oh, shit. Light up that laughing gas, sweet A. Shout out to laughing gas, getting us high. Listen, nothing like a nice blunt in a beautiful studio getting to know my friend for the first time after 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> nothing I want more than that. It's like that. a first date suddenly. <laughs> yeah. So what are your interests and hobbies? So do you want kids? I know everything about you. I know. Should we test that? <coughs> okay. Okay. Try me. Ask me a question that you that you think I don't know about you. It's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I, Michelle. No. Anne. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it's Emily's is Michelle. I'm mixing up my friends. <laughs> Get it right, honey. Oh, sorry. Okay, ask me another one. Um, People are going to figure out your social security number through this podcast. Well, no, Someone's I feel disheartened. I feel disheartened you didn't know my middle name. What I is did, a friendship unless you know somebody's I middle name? I did know name? it. I just got it <laughs> confused with my other kid. Like, it's like when you have multiple kids. Yeah. You were my first. But as a kid, you made me a mother but, <laughs> in, in podcast. But as a kid, when someone calls you the wrong name, like they're old and crazy. Yeah, I'm old and crazy. Okay, but listen, here's the thing. Middle names, we need to get rid of them. What, what, was, In the, general, what was the name why? of the person that, that took my virginity? See, you don't even care about me. You don't, <laughs> who doesn't know who popped my cherry? If you don't love me, you should know who popped my cherry. Dude, when you say pop my cherry, <laughs> I know you were it's also so visceral. <laughs> it's like, okay, calm down. It's just disgusting. <laughs> it's like, What? <coughs> the analogy. <coughs> Can you not pop my cha- my cherry? Okay, who is the first person to pop your cherry? I don't know who popped mine. Um, Gus. She's right. Oh! But when you hear back the name Gus, <laughs> not Gus taking your cherry. <laughs> yeah, Gus. You had a guy named Gus. Fuck you. Yeah, but that was short for Augustine. Gust Augustine? Augustine. <laughs> if I told you his full name, it's so powerful. Gust I can't August- do it I, out of I privacy. I like thinking that his name is Gust Augustine. <laughs> Gust- I'm losing my Gust- virginity. Gust-, Gust Augustine the shank slayer. <laughs> Augustine. The-, the one who's been where I uh, most want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Gus Augustine, the cherry taker of Shanktown. <laughs> oh, what did you lose your virginity to? Um, I lost it to this guy. I don't know if I can say his name. I just bl- blew Gus. Gus. Up. Gus, I'm I'm just doing shoe shine dick. I lost things, it to this yeah. guy named Ken. 
Ken. Yeah. Did you make that up? Yes. I knew right away. Who picks Ken? It's like the Barbie <laughs> movies in the in the in the world. I never you you straight up just lied and got called out. I see the names. You think I wanted to bring up Augustine tonight? <coughs> today? Ken. Oh, this man. Ken. She really hasn't had sex yet. <laughs> We've like so, the dirtiest podcast and you've never fucked. That would be so funny. I'm actually a virgin. If I've never fucked before, oh my God, who would I be? Completely different person. Completely different. This podcast I would, know would not nothing. be what it is. No, I would know. No- what would we talk about? Oh, the way you water the Monstera plant. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. I was telling, I was talking with Hormos the other day. I'm like, I was, cause I wanted to write a bit about how jealous I am about how easy it is for men to take care of their dicks. Like me and Hormos were talking we were, and Hormos was like, it's great. Like my dick's like out. Like you guys have to, when you work on it, you have to work interior. It's too much. It's a lot. I don't want to think about and then, vaginal fold cleaning and, right now. Why are you bringing this up? Well, cause I was saying that. I wanted to write a bit about it, but then I got insecure that people were going to be like, oh, women love talking about their vaginas. But I'm like, it's such a big part of life when you have an engine that constantly needs to be worked on. Can you not call your pussy an (laughs) engine that constantly needs to be worked on? I got a Hemi. (laughs) I don't know what that means. Yeah, you know, I saw it in Joe Dirt once. (laughs) (laughs) I just want all the guys to know that I'm sh- straight enough to not know what a Hemi means. I'm still looking for dick. I know it sounds aggressive. Well, they the know. They know I got a Hemi. They know you're looking for dick. Oh, they do? Well, yeah. Okay. They can tell. What does that mean? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> not me fighting you for the first time. Uh, for the first time. Physically? I would lose. I, I already tap out. Tap <laughs> out. You wouldn't even hit me back. No. But if I did, I'd clock you with my rings. No, your rings would hurt. Out of the blue, I sweetie. Watched, just when you least expect it, bam, shank you know, shanks. You know what I'd do to you? What? I'd pull out an outlet. <laughs> Touch your rings to it again. <laughs> Sarah came over my house last week. <laughs> <laughs> I the potatoes. She, <laughs> <laughs> not you coming up soon. No. Stop us hanging the punchline. They're she, not going to know. I whispered it to you. You whispered it into You're the mic to, to me. yes and me, bitch. You're not supposed to be like, oh, she's throwing off the show. I yes and everything wacky and kooky your ass does. <laughs> no. that's, that's the basic rules of improv. That's the basic rules of I don't do improv. Comedy, Did honey. you see I named my boyfriend Ken? I'm not good at improv. Yeah, that was appalling. <laughs> yeah. Ken's it's like, like, I don't want to say his real name. What is it? Ken. It's like... UCB, I went to STI. <laughs> I gotta go. It's not an STI joke. I'm, not an STI I've never joke. had an STI. Mm-hmm. An STD. I think I've had an STI. An STI, no problem. STD, no thank you. <laughs> what am I, a whore? <laughs> <gasps> Okay. What were we talking about? Getting to know each other. Ugh. <laughs> I know. I'm we already it. know each other. That's the thing. This was your idea. Let's get to know each other. Oh, we were talking about how I got electrocuted. What's my aunt's name? Oh, you got electrocuted. Hold on, we got to tell us. <laughs> she comes over to my house. She's trying to plug in. I need, look, show them your hands. There's the rings are, by the way, I lost my ring you gave me and I want another one. <laughs> She's like, the spoiled brat. <laughs> I left the ring you gave me and I want you to get me another one. I w- it was my favorite ring. Oh, because I'm a nice girl. Stop doing that. They saw Wait, your oh, ring. I, <laughs> I'm really, this is, a, this is a high for me. Showing off my hands. Well, so they, she almost lost her life with those hands. I know. She because- went to go unplug a computer charger and she put her ring on, like touched it to the... Metal. metal where you plug it in and then went to plug it in and i heard i heard her get zapped like i heard her get fried from the inside for a second and uh it was like no it sounded like when a fly goes into one of those things it was like zip, like that and yeah. it c- kind of made like a popping sound yeah 
And I and then and then you were shocked. You thought you were dead for a second. I should have played it off. I should have been like, Sarah? No. Sarah. <laughs> you would have done that. That would have tripped you that out. That would have tripped me out. Because, Could that have sent but, you into a spiral? Because even for a few days later, I was like, am I okay? <laughs> am I, is my arm okay? Like, do I have it? Am I like, do I have a secret power now that I've been electrocuted? Have you felt any different? Yeah. How? No, oh. <laughs> catch me all of a sudden seeing entities. You're Wait. like, uh, you're like, I, I see think- shadow people. It's like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if that's from the uh, electrocution. So she zaps herself. It makes that zap sound. And you're like freaking out. And you're like, am I OK? And you keep asking, am I OK? And I'm like, dude, yes. Like, I, I don't. How do I know I'm OK? You're like, First you're all- not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not the truth? <laughs> She's fine. I'm if- like, isn't there something in between being dead and like dying yeah <laughs> like i thought maybe i was in the in between like, no no you were here with us you're still here i'm letting you know now just in case you're I have ptsd from the shock <laughs> what kind of sexual ptsd do you have <laughs> what kind of hoary ass ptsd <laughs> i have ptsd D. <laughs> <laughs> i need some ptsd <laughs> that's no horrible no. um I have yeah. PTSD from the shock. So she keeps asking, am I okay? Am I okay? And I'm like, yes. And sometimes First I feel all, vibrating when, my left arm out of nowhere. It happens. First of all, when you grow up in Florida as a kid, you get shocked sometimes. That's like life. She's, you just sometimes like, yeah. let me tell you, I didn't learn. I was taking my, I, this is, do you want to hear one of the scariest facts about Kim Congdon? This is 100% yes. true. This is 100, this is no Ken name. Okay. okay. Tell us the truth. I was 1,000% taking toast out of the toaster with a fork until I was like 19 or 20. That says a lot. And I must have just never hit it right. If that was me, I'd be dead, honey. <laughs> I've been taking, and didn't know. No one ever told me. No what one told me. What do you mean? No what one, do you mean? You're, that's like saying I've been taking baths with toasters th- for no 10 one, years. No one told me. No one told me these things. Your parents weren't like, bitch, be careful. No. I'm so like, when did you have the first realization? When like- I was doing it and my college roommate was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're going to kill yourself. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you can't stick a fork in the toaster. And I was like, why? How do you get the toast out? That was my response was, how do you get the toast out when you want it out early? No, catch she- her in the bath, blow drying her hair next week. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? You're not supposed to do that? Yeah, you know you're not supposed to do that. You know, you know I know that one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, you know. I know that one, but yeah, I didn't know. But that's crazy. That is crazy. How did I survive that long? I don't know. I, you have I great survival skills. Is this a? Is this all a plan to get me to bring up your great survival <laughs> skills know, again? I when you compliment my survival skills, she's like, if you want to get, Kim I could Kong make in. a fire and, uh, if we needed one, but you could. If we need a fire, I'll make a fire. How would you do it? I'd go turn the stove on, grab a paper towel, (laughs) make a fire. Right here? I'd make a, grab a lighter. No, like, could you do it with logs? I could figure it out. Depends on what I found. I bet you could make fire. I bet I could make fire. There's no way I could make fire. If we were stranded, you'd want to be on my team. I know, I know. You wouldn't want to be on mine. No, oh my God, (laughs) this bitch. If we were stranded on an island together. Worst person to be on an island with, I would say me. Right? Yeah, I don't bring anything to the table. No, I'm anxious. Well, no, not all the all the things you bring to the table are not needed on an island. You bring a lot to the table. I'm too. See, anxious. I'm nice to her. She, she had to force that one out. <laughs> a softer side of Kim. <laughs> new studio, new Kim. The angel works hard, but Kimmy works hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Wait, what were you just saying? I don't know. You got shocked. Oh, and then we, and then you kept asking for so long if you were okay. And then you started Googling it because you wouldn't let it go. I'm like, this bitch just won't let go that she got shocked violently a second ago. And you Google what to do after you get shocked. I felt different internally. Yeah. My whole body was like, (laughs) Uh, yeah, of course I want to make sure everything's okay. I didn't fry my whole neurological system with a ring (laughs) on an outlet. Of course I want to double check. (laughs) Sue me for checking to make sure my nervous system is functioning accurately after I almost died. It's all it's all laughs and giggles until I'm dead. She's trying to kill me to get the rings. 
This bitch is just trying to kill me I for the ring. I do love those rings. <laughs> She's trying to kill me for the ring. Oh, I want those rings. So Sarah Googles what to do after you get electrocuted and the first thing it says is... <laughs> I get all of a sudden I'm on a slideshow. It says eat potato soup. <laughs> it does. It said eat potato soup. It's Why? A, I eat don't know. Soup. And then it said potato soup might be comforting. For you. <laughs> That's the only reason. That's what it said. And I'm like, what asshole made this? Some dude from Wisconsin's writing articles about being electrocuted. <laughs> And I'm reading them. Oh, go home and eat potato soup after you've been electrocuted. It's just sad. <laughs> There's no, no sadder thing. Go out with a friend. I'm sorry, are we in a Pick- famine? <laughs> You're eating potato soup again? Ew, how sad is that? I think the last thing I want when I'm electrocuted is potato soup. Mm. Give me some sushi. Give me eggs benedict. Wake me up. Potato soup? You are- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, do I have teeth? Do I not have teeth? That seems like you would give like an elderly person who's missing yeah, all of it's their like, teeth. Turn off all the lights, make no sounds, and eat creamy potato soup. <laughs> it's like I, I'll go back and I'd rather stick my ring in the plug again, sweetie. <laughs> the king. Then eat sad potato soup. Listen, no one should be eating potato soup alone. A potato soup kink. <laughs> now that's interesting. I could see having a potato kink. Potatoes are kind of sexual. Nothing sexual about a potato to me. <laughs> Actually. Not the least <laughs> sexual vegetable. What's Potato. the most? What's the most sexual? Vegetable? Yeah. <sighs> bok choy. I don't know. I just wanted to say bok choy. <laughs> a cucumber? A cucumber a is cucumber. good. I, p- I picked up a cucumber at this. St- I don't eat cucumber, but I was but grocery. I sh- fuck them. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going <laughs> to <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I don't get fucking things. F- no. I'm not like a put things inside me, girl. No, I'm not like, oh, welcome to my dildo arsenal. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. If you have a dildo arsenal, also like, I I'm strictly. Listen, sweetie, I'm strictly clitly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get putting things inside your vagina. Besides That's a, dick. a penis. Besides a dick, it's the only thing that fits right. Yeah, but maybe, but maybe a cucumber. Mentally ill people, mentally ill horse. The mentally ill throwing, horse will fuck anything. <laughs> they're throwing pumpkins in their pussy. They're throwing beef dude, turkey sticks light in their pussy. They're trying to break the glass. I'm like, it's dude. Like, enough with the ch- pussy challenges. Yeah, get the screwdriver out of your pussy. <laughs> it's an anatomy. I got to go put a picture of <laughs> a single dead horse. <laughs> I love the kids. It never stops. Dude, it's like <laughs> with callous hands. <laughs> Kim. The only thing I need to get him done. Cut that out. See if you cut my nails out. Please look. Can we get her nails Anytime close up you on see, her nails? And uh, just make his job really hard. Anytime you see my the, the these two nails shown, you need to blur them. <laughs> no. out. The whole hour or you're fired. I swear to God. (laughs) Bitch, your nail is New studio, new Kim. The (laughs) angel works hard, but Kimmy works harder. (sighs) Have you calmed down? Was I too happy? I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that. I remember my mom used to do that when I would yell. She'd go, okay, have you calmed down? Like all calmly. You do yell out of nowhere sometimes. I yell out of nowhere? (laughs) Yes. When you get angry, you hold it in until you yell. And then I feel nothing. And then, and, <laughs> and then, then she I, comes back like five minutes later, feeling so much better. Yeah, you love a quick. Break. I can't do this, and I walk out. <laughs> I'll slam a door and come back. Yeah, she will. <laughs> I'll slam. I'm slamming many metaphoric doors. <laughs> but you're kind of like that too. Yeah, we've when we were doing we're very stone explosive. science. When we were doing stone science, it was just us with hammers and yelling at each other, trying to build the set. I'd be like, Sarah, give me the screw. She'd be like, What's a screw? I'm like sweating. I have like all this extra stuff I bought because it's cute. Oh, uh, we have to put up all these bows. She bought a bunch of shit for me to hang up. Suddenly, I'm in a relationship with her. I have to hang up all your shit you buy. It's like, what does this well, have to do the, with me? You're the handy guy in your relationship. I'm done. That's someone needs to be. Isn't that a good f- skill to have? No, I'm like I a handicap when it comes to being handy. I'm like, oh, I wish I could hang. That's this truly picture. why I'm trying to date like a carpenter or a welder. Now I'm like, if you can't hang things or build things or fix your own car, don't talk to me. Well, you're in LA. 
You think you're going to find a no, no a I carpenter? Don't. Who are you trying to date? Jesus? <laughs> you're trying to date a carpenter? There's probably well, a guy there- dressed like Jesus I could date in LA. Yeah, probably. That's pretending to be a carpenter. I bet you could find a carpenter. Carpenter dick? I don't know. I don't hate it. It comes Have you handy. ever seen the videos of the carpenters when they, they have like these flat things and they jam it into the, in the, the thing and it looks sexual and they're like kicking it with their knee? I didn't Do you know what I'm a, talking about? A carpenter kink. Yeah, and they're jamming it with their knee. Have you seen like the hot videos they do of t- on TikTok? There's like, they go viral. Like all these like single moms, they like, they, they, they put them on and they just watch them on repeat. And it's no. just like these guys and they take the carpet. It's like when you want the carpet to, I think, I think what they're doing is when you want the carpet to touch the edge of the wall, like to go into the edge of the wall all the way. Yeah. And they have to do that like manually with their bodies. And so they're just ramming. You have a carpenter kink. Maybe. <laughs> it's Does like, that not sound hot to you? Um, I'm not into that. You're not. I'm into like, an intellectual with tattoos. Sarah likes a dude that likes matcha tea. Yes. And like has yes. his toenails painted. Yes. Look, Sarah. Okay, first of all, I can't get well, can past you have, his Can you have gotten a worse looking guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the ugliest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. We need a hot one. They have hot ones. Have you seen? Okay, wait. There are just hot this is what I want. On this is what man. I want, Xavier. Can you get the hot guy splitting wood? Pull, up, Google that. You know who will come up. You know who I'm talking about. What do you mean, hot guy splitting wood? Wait till. Does that have sound? This is like will your we, porn we'll searches. Hot guy splitting wood. Like what? You'll see what I'm okay, talking okay. about. Okay. Okay. You want? You want? Listen. You're never gonna want a man with toenails after I show you this video. <laughs> I've never want a man with toenails. I want a toenailless <laughs> man. That's what I'm Look looking at this for. Guy. A man who doesn't have toenails. Look at this. I'm guy. watching. Okay. Yes. Can we turn the volume on? I, I see the overalls. I'm Listen. in. Listen. It's. Um, so what I have is backup is I'm gonna probably end up just using the wedge uh, to help me. Okay. Open watch. 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 Because of that, we're gonna wear glasses today. Or for this round particularly. Put on those glasses, Daddy. Yeah, Let's Daddy. Get Let's get to work. Listen. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Listen. I mean. Listen. Listen. I listen. Oh, fuck the wedge. Open for me. Open for me. Now tell me if you want a guy picking out a, <laughs> a, a light maroon toenail polish after I'm seeing that. I want a man in toenail that polish. That is what I want. That's what I want. I want a guy splitting wood sexually okay. and saying open for me to the wood. And I want to be pregnant and barefoot standing next to him you have baking something bread. Primal, but he's hot. He's hot. He's hot, but he was an exceptionally... Li- he, if I he know. looked like that, he's had tattoos. He's also doing and TikToks like that. I'm into that. tattoos. I'm into tattoos. Yeah, he he's... Ta- I can't. He's What's hot. his handle? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's oh, well. into it. That, that's a Bradley.Thor. Oh, Bradley.Thor. He's about to be one of our... Guess. Oh, we should bring him <laughs> yeah, on the pod. I know. We, we, we should bring in logs so, of wood. I'm carrying them so in. Weird. I'm like, oh, no, we would act so, so weird. weird. So Bradley, what's your middle name? Oh, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> like, I, all of a sudden, we're both so quiet. We're completely so, different. We've never done this before. Uh, <laughs> we never had a welder on the pod. Oh, he's not even a welder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in the wrong profession. Oh. I don't even know what he does. He's a TikToker. He's truly. a lumberjack. He's a fake lumberjack. He's a fake lumberjack. He cuts woods. But well, he's a like, No, he but, cuts wood. Yeah. He might be in it for the love of the game, but he also is in it for the likes. He's honey. doing it for the likes, but he cuts wood. That's not a thing. He I just know, but I think some days maybe he's like, I don't have any wood to cut or I don't have any jobs to do. I'm just going to slice this, slice this log and get say open likes. for me. Sometimes he'll be talk about how wet, like the woods wet in the middle. This guy's a sick I've watched fuck. a few of his videos. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you'll hear them on repeat on TikTok and from my room. <laughs> no. Just thunk oh, right there. <gasps> no. <laughs> Open, Open for me. <laughs> I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Come on. Op- Open for me. Open for me. No. Yeah. It's yeah. very performative, but. Yeah, but imagine you're that man. And your job is to I want to be that man. Sexual That'd be nice. wood videos. Mm-hmm. All that guy does is chop wood and eat pussy. 
It has to be. He just has to. If he's straight, all he does. I can't wait until we find out he's so gay. Probably. He's just eating ass. He's not going to open for me. He's thinking about an asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a whole different thing in his head. He's well, like, that butt's so wet. <laughs> it's like way gayer. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, he, the overalls really did, did it for me. Yeah. I love a man in an overall. I love a man in an but, overall. But no, it could go either way. A man in an overalls, it could be like, I'm sorry, are you a you know cartoon like, bear or are you a man? No, yeah, you have to be the right kind of man in an you overall. You gotta be a masculine man. Nothing like a puny man in an overall. You can't, no dad bods in overalls. That's the rule. Dad bod stays out of overalls. Dad bod's not bad, just in not I like a dad bod. Who doesn't? It feels safe and comfy. Yeah, super comfy. Mm-hmm. Love a good dad bod. I hate... Too many abs. Too many abs. Out. Too many abs. Is there such a thing as too many abs? Yeah. Like, it's think- like when they're like really ripped and chiseled. I don't like a guy. Well, there that- comes. There's an attitude with that. Well, I don't like a it's guy. It's not that- a casual. Oh, I'm chiseled. It's like I don't like a gym guy. I don't like a gym guy. I like a guy that's fit, but it's like he doesn't really. Even if he does go to the gym a lot, you don't know. He didn't talk about it. He keeps it to himself. We don't have to see him shaking his protein Pre-workout. things. It's like, I don't need to be involved. I don't, we don't need to go out to lunch and you're ordering chicken and broccoli. Like I want someone I can live a life with. Okay. So you don't want a healthy man. I want a decently but healthy he, man, he but not upset. But you order something good. You can order like be the potato. Man. Yeah. And order, steak. order a dim sum. Please. Something that I wouldn't. Please order, yeah, order something or, so I could take a bite because I'm trying to order like that. Yeah, order a lasagna. Please. Is that too much to ask? Catch us telling men what to order. <laughs> Mansplaining ordering. <gasps> they don't even know what to eat. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been going? Uh, 31 minutes. Holy shit. Time flies when yeah. you're pursuing your. I, I macroed a micro. You macro to micro? Oh, yeah. Sweet A. And now here we are in the, in our studio you, living our best lives. You didn't even ask me about myself. Mom. Okay, I'll ask you about yourself. Well, are, are you supposed to ask me the question? Oh. Okay. What was my first dog's name? I didn't even know you had a dog. Wow, that's really mean. I've actually had a bunch of dogs, and my mom would let me get dogs for free and give them away in two weeks. You that should- is sociopathic. <laughs> What do you mean? I didn't have a good childhood. She's like, it's fine. Get rid of it. Give it to someone else. My mom would be like, this dog's so cute. And then we'd have it and she'd see the reality of having a dog. And she'd be like, well, she came home one day. We got this dog. I remember during the hurricane, there was a hurricane. We ran away from Florida to North Carolina and on our way, (coughs) sorry, at a gas station. At a gas station, there's this lady with a box of puppies and it said free puppies. And when we walked up, she was like, I got to get rid of these four storm hits. <laughs> like she was like, no. she was like, the st- it was like, literally, I remember it was like windy. It was like raining. There was like trash flying in the air and everyone's like, there's traffic. Everyone's on the highway trying to leave. That's how it is in Florida when there's a hurricane. Okay. Everyone's trying to leave and there's traffic. It's scary. And this lady had a box of puppies. So people were taking them. And I was like, we've got to get one mom. I was like nine. And my mom was like, oh my God, we have to save it. And we no. got this dog and I was so excited. I was like, I have a dog. No. That's what I always dreamed of. No. I have a dog. And then like, probably when we got back and got settled in the house for a couple of days and the dog started being a dog and like shitting and peeing and doing all that stuff. My mom came home one day and she was like, you know, I Googled the dog because he's got like dark gums. No. <laughs> She's trying to get rid of the dog. <laughs> She's like, I Googled the dog. He's got dark gums. And those dogs, that means they're mixed. And that means they're they're violent. It started turning racist. No. So I was like, what's no, happening? No, <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. And she was like, we can't have a violent dog in the house. We have to give it away. Was it violent? No, it was like six weeks old. What well, was its name? I named it Roxy. That is sad. Yeah. Why'd you name it Roxy? Like the surf brand? Yeah, because I, <laughs> I love surfing. <sighs> I knew it. Okay. Wow, I didn't know that. Yep. What else? How old were you when you got your ears pierced? Two months old. 
No. Yeah. You were a baby with bling? That checks out. Yeah. A baby with bling. Do you think my mom wasn't going to have my ears pierced? Your, (laughs) Your mom was one of those if she waited for your permission. I asked my mom in first grade. Yeah. And then I knew it. We had such different childhoods. Uh, I said, take me to get my ears pierced, please. And then I sat in the chair and I started crying. And there's a lady in the, in the earring, the Claire's, the earring place. And she was like, I don't know why you're doing this to your child. But I demanded that I get my ears pierced. And then I buck, I started crying. And your mom's so nice. She was probably like, she wants it. Yeah. <laughs> your mom's so sweet. If someone would have said that to my mom, my mom would have been like, bitch. Yanked her by her hair. Did your mom pierce all of your siblings' ears when they're babies? She was like, it's better when they're babies because it doesn't hurt as much. I'm like, now as an adult, I'm like, it probably hurts just as much. They just can't say anything because they're babies. So they cry. Are you going to pierce your baby's ears? Probably not. I might give them a tat. Giving your baby a tat. Tatting up your baby. Tatting up your kind baby. Of fresh. It is fresh. Like, um, his vibe is wrong. His vibe. You know, your baby comes out with a weird vibe. His vibe is off. I want him to be a musician. Let's throw some ink on him. Imagine your baby coming out and you guys just feel awkward around each other. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. That would be a nightmare. You feel no relationship to the baby you Awkward have. son. Awkward son. He's <laughs> like walks through and is like, oh, hey. And he's like, hey. And he's like five and he just opens the fridge. <laughs> like, it's so like that's a complete my stranger. Yeah. The thought of having a kid that you don't know that lives in your house is like a complete stranger is weird. Yeah. And like some days I bet they feel like complete strangers, especially when they're like in puberty and they're crazy as fuck. Do you remember staying the night at like someone's house and how completely strange you felt in someone else's home? Alien. Alien. I was like, dude, this the feeling like of someone else's toilet is disgusting. First the, of all. Okay. Someone else's dad. Ugh. Someone else's dad is revolting <laughs> like, like as a kid being in a stranger's house like one of my friends kids okay one of my friends i went over to play at her house and her dad was a monster he Why? would he would he had a collection of globes he was really nerdy had no filter almost maybe on the spectrum a okay. little bit okay and but undiagnosed and he okay. would make us watch um uh sci-fi no. He would just watch sci-fi for hours and he would talk like this. <clears throat> and I would call my mom and I was like, mom, you need to come get me. I, I'm grossed out. This girl was eating a brick of Gouda cheese. <laughs> no. Yes. She Relatable. was eating a brick of Gouda cheese openly. Been there. <laughs> uh, openly. <laughs> and then her dad was making us watch the sci-fi channel. No. And her dog almost drowned me in the pool. Yeah. Too many things. We can't be friends. Yeah. Starting with your dad. When you meet someone's parents, you're like, oh, okay. That checks out. Right. People's houses smell different. There's this house. There's this apartment. Oh, this is so fucked up. You ever remember something from your childhood and you're like, this is fucked up. Yeah. There's this apartment. So my my grandparents used to live in this apartment complex and there was like a bunch of kids that lived at it. And I was friends with this girl that had a little sister, my little sister's age. So we became friends. And she, it was her dad's place that she would go on like every other week and she would be there. And it would be like so fun whenever she was there because we could play. And we would go hang out at her dad's. And her dad was nice. Like he wasn't like, he wasn't like creepy, like touch kids creepy. But he was now as an adult, I know, severely mentally ill. What do you mean? Like he would tell us like <clears throat> stories that like, he hears voices. He would draw pictures of the thing, the faces he sees. No. Yeah. And like, he was like real crazy. Not him having more imaginary friends than you. <laughs> <laughs> we loved him. We were like, let's go to blank and blank's house. So her dad can tell us more scary stories. Yeah. And we'd go and like, listen to scary stories and be like, yeah, last night I heard the devil say, kill yourself. No, <laughs> no. We were like, wow. No. It's like, this it's like I shouldn't be there in this man. <laughs> room listening to me he's never touched us he was always very nice but he was telling us these crazy stories he would tell us about his appointments with the therapist no he was really sweet i bet one time i lied to him and i told him i had magic powers and he believed me okay and he was like i bet you do you should work on it you can work on it here if you want he like gave me a cup he was like really mentally ill yeah, he was crazy. And my mom was just like, did you guys have fun at their house? I'd come home and be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm a magician now, Next mom. door to him yeah. was this guy named Jerry. And I will say this fucker's name. He was this disabled guy. 
Jared. He was in a he was in a wheelchair and he was pretty like severe. He was like on his Stephen Hawking's vibes, right? Like he was like he was like, and at first, like being a young kid, I was like, oh, this is like a disabled guy, and like I would wave to him and like try to say hi and be nice. And then the third time I came around, he had his dick out. No. Yes. And he was just like, <laughs> nah. dick out. And I was like, <gasps> nah. and I ran. And then I told the girl next door and she's like, yeah, my dad says we can't say hi to him because he does that. I'm going to tell my dad. And she's like, dad, he did it again. And the dad nah. went banging on his door. The and mentally this, ill dad? The mentally ill dad's nah. fighting the <laughs> pedo Stephen Hawking. No. Nah. Yeah. And then, and then it became a thing. Like he would hear when we were playing outside cause we'd play in the parking lot in front of the apartment complex. This is such Florida trash stories. I would, I'm sorry. And we would play by the dumpster in the parking lot in front of the pedo's house. No. And he had his wheelchair because, uh, so he didn't get hit by cars. It had like a flag on it, like a really tall flag. And it would like, it was literally a red flag. <laughs> I swear to God. I wish I was making that up. And we, when we were playing and there would be a lot of cars in the parking lot, we could see his red flag no. coming and we'd all run and be like, the, the wheelchair guy with his penis is coming. No. And we'd run away. And it was like part of like the game. He would just chase us with his dick and we'd like run and giggle. What if he was able-bodied, but he pulled his dick out at the wrong time and that's how he got in the... He was pretending to not uh, to be disabled? No, well, what if he was able-bodied, but he had like, he got into an accident by showing his dick. <laughs> it's like like on a highway, he can't he, stop showing his can't dick. can't stop, he's addicted to showing his, his dick. dick. Yeah. I'm a dick. <laughs> I'm addicted to kids. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, adults. I miss him. No, but adults. When you're a kid, there's nothing more bizarre than a weird adult. There's like this lady. I don't even remember her name, but she used to work at our in our school in the cafeteria, and she would take stuff out of the trash and be like, "Who's this? Is you didn't finish it? Eat it!" No. And I'm like, and everyone would be like, "No, I don't want to eat that. I'm not eating that." She's like, "It's perfectly good. This is a perfectly good banana. Who wants to eat it?" No. She was one of those. My stepdad's like that. It's like, you're making everyone step feel dad, weird. Get out of the trash. My stepdad won't stop. He refuses to stop picking things out of the trash and trying to force people to eat them. It's like, no. Does he? He's like in this mindset that's like not a crumb can go to waste. And I'm like, I get it. It's very like zen of you, but like we can't. With this scarcity mindset's scary it's scary i'm like this is the only this is the only ounce of peanut butter we're ever gonna get again i remember when i was staying there during lockdown that he had like this cilantro that was like half of it was like molded and like gooey and then it had like a few good pieces but i had just bought new cilantro so i threw that away and i put the new one in the fridge and he was like but it still had good pieces yeah that's and in crazy. my head i'm like just throw it away like it's got mold on it probably yeah, just because that one looks okay doesn't mean it's not internally it's not gonna taste, rotting. It's probably just not going to taste good. It's been next to mold. Yeah, it's just weird. One time, I he pull, I put like I was, I threw my food in the trash. He was like, "Are you? You're not going to eat that?" And I was like, "No, it's in the trash. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to eat it." And he pulled my turkey out and he put it on his plate and he was eating it. No. Yes. Why? Maybe he's just trying to come up he's a saver honey he's a you kind of like that about him huh i don't mind it yeah yeah i mean if you're hungry and someone's I heard you light just went off Ding. Cha-ching. <laughs> we need drops Cha-ching. we need Cha-ching. your we need your when you have a business idea Cha-ching. a circle back sarah a circle back sarah she stays circling back she stays circling back is that our pod i think so what are we at Oh yeah, that's, that's our, our pod. pod. We did it. We did it. Um, guys, make sure to follow Mastermind. It's, yes, M A S T E R M Y N D Mastermind Media on uh, Instagram. Please check them out. Look at these fucking cameras. Show them some love. Um, and uh, Sarah, where can people find you? You can find me at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter. You can check out my podcast, Shank. New episodes of that every Wednesday. And then here on This Bitch every Monday. And I'm going to be with Kim Congdon and Josh Potter July 29th in Bellflower, 8 p.m. We have a show. It's going to be so much fun. 
And yeah, what about you? Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Kim Congdon, on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon. Check me out on twitch.tv slash Queen Kong One. I will be doing a giveaway for two Skankfest tickets on there very, very soon. Um, I have to do that very soon because it's coming up so quick. We're going to be in Skankfest October uh, 13th through 15th, right? And um, yeah, come see us in Bellflower July 29th uh, with Josh Potter. It's going to be super fun. Uh, check out my other podcast, Broad Topics, T-O-P-I-X, anywhere you find podcasts and on the Gas Digital Network. Um, Xavier, do you want to let people know where to find you or do you... He doesn't give a fuck. I respect that. <laughs> yeah. I like that about we you. Love him. Again, follow Mastermind Media on social media, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.